Hello, welcome back to another exciting episode. We hope you enjoy it. Oh, don't forget if you could please check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash WrestleMania. We'd really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe. We really like seeing those numbers go up. And we appreciate everyone who has subscribed in the past, so thank you very much. Now, without further ado, on with the video. So today we're going to do some easy sauerkraut, or easy fermented cabbage, however you want to say it. Now what makes it easy is the steps. The end result is the same. So I invite you to come along with me to learn how to make some easy sauerkraut. Now what you're going to need for this easy sauerkraut, or easy fermented cabbage, of course, cabbage, knife, cutting board, you can use a mandolin. Uh, you can use the knife to cut it as small as you can, but I'm going to go ahead and use um, an old food processor that has one of those little um, like spindles in it. Now on the spindles, a little loud there, sorry. On the cutting spindles, as you can see, um, then you can adjust this. I have it down to the lowest level, which is level one. So that's what I suggest to use to make it a truly easy uh, sauerkraut. And of course you want a bowl to put everything in. You want salt, um, Himalayan sea salt uh, or kosher salt would be good. And of course a towel. Um, I have an old towel here. What we're going to do is that's to cover up the bowl and I'll explain why you want to do that later. So get an old one like I have here. Um, I mean you can use a a new one too, but I always like to use the old ones that way um, I don't get yelled at. <laughs> but anyway, that's the things that you will need. So let's get started. Okay, the first step that we're going to do, of course, is we're going to take these wonderful, nice big cabbages and we're going to cut them down. So let's go step by step and I'll show you what I mean. And the first thing you want to do, of course, is Take some of the outside layers off. Don't cut them down, don't throw them out, because we can use them as toppers. Um, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So just go ahead, again, take all the bad stuff off. I shouldn't say bad stuff, but the outside layer, which could be a little on the dry side what have you. Maybe start to turn a little bit, little, little bit brown. There we go. Oops. Do one more leaf. That should do it. Nice and pretty. Then what you do, you go ahead Cut that thing into fours and quarters. Now you see the core right here? Let's see if I can show it to you. I don't know how well that's going to show up. You can kind of see the core right there. So what you want to do, the core doesn't tend to ferment very well. Um, some people leave it in but most people cut it out. So you take that core, cut it down through, and you just cut the core out. And you do that to all four sections. And I'll show you what to do next. Now, we have them all quartered down. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna slice them down even further so that it can fit inside the processor. And I'll show you what I mean. So what we do, go ahead and give myself some room here. And all we 
do again we just cut this down this into halves again Okay, now that we've cut those quarters in half, so we have um, such, I guess, like an eighth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yep, so an eighth um, of a cut per side. We're going to bring in the big guns. Now, this is an older processor, an old uh, Cuisinart. So, what we're going to do is gonna take off the safety top. Put in one of the quarters. Put the safety cap back on. Turn it on. And it's that easy. Put another one in and just keep going and keep going until you have it all done. Okay, we just put the last of it in. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to the next step. Now, just so you know, I did have to dump this um, a few times because of the amount of cabbage that we had. But let's go to the next step, and I'll show you what we do next. All right. Now we're going to dump this. Now this is the fourth time I've dumped it. Now each time that I did, I took about uh, half a tablespoon of um, salt. And I sprinkled it over top. So I'm going to go ahead and dump this last one. So of course, about half a tablespoon of salt on each layer. What that means is, of course, each head of cabbage had about one tablespoon. Um, it's kind of a generic way to, to handle it. So, again, one tablespoon per head of cabbage, and you just kind of mix it up, um, like layer it. When you put some cabbage in, you put some salt on top, more cabbage, salt on top, cabbage, salt on top, and then by that time, you should have all your salt on it. So, I'm going to go ahead and put the last of the half the tablespoon on top of this. And after you put that salt on, what you do, you just go on in there. You just mix it up. Now you can put gloves on if you want, but I just wash my hands. Just wash them really good. Go ahead and mix things up. Make sure you get to the bottom. And if you come across any clumps, all you do is just pull them apart because you want the salts to get in there. Um, you don't have to mix around too much, just enough to get the salts through. Should be good. See, not too much mixing at all. Then all you do, you take that old towel or dish rag, you lay it over top, and you let it sit for about an hour or two. I normally like to push it more towards two hours, um, but that's up to you. If you start seeing liquid come out, you start seeing it break down really good, then you're ready to go but I really wouldn't put it on for too much more than two hours. Now the nice thing about this easy method is if for some reason with the temperature or the humidity or whatever it doesn't break down correctly, you can go back to the traditional method of making sauerkraut or fermented cabbage. And what I'll do is probably this fall when I get my own cabbage out of my garden, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll show you the traditional method of doing cabbage or fermented cabbage and that's about it um, we'll be back in about two hours and I'll show you the next step okay the cabbage has been sitting for about two hours now what we need are a couple containers I use mason jars some airlocks and some sort of a weight. I like to use uh, pickle pebbles. And if you look at the description below, um, you can get a shortcut to Amazon where you can buy them. 
So let's start packing. Okay. Now, as you can see here, it's been sitting there for a little bit. If you dig down, you're going to see it's very wet, very moist. So what happened is the salts have broken that down exactly how we want it. Just mixing up a little bit more here. And all you do is you start packing. get it to a certain point, um, you can get a tapper of some sort, or if you can reach your hands in there, my hands are a little big, but if you can reach your hands in there to tap things down, that would be great. Of course, again, make sure you wash your hands beforehand or wear gloves. So then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and fill up all the containers that we need and then get back to you. Oh, one other trick. Again, this is easy sauerkraut. Um, one way you can wash these containers here, these mason jars, just put them in your dishwasher and they'll be nice and sanitized when they get out. So you don't have to worry about those extra steps. All right, I'm going to put the last of it in here. This is that I'm using. Obviously, you can use anything to smash it down with, but this is a tapper um, that you use on a Vitamix. Just kind of pushing it down, getting all the air out. And you can see it kind of getting down below the the juice. Then what I'd like to do is, you know those leaves, those outside leaves that we uh, took off, we got to do is fold them over a couple times, put them right in there, push them down. Take another leaf. Take all the really super bad spots out of it. Put it on the other one. Smash that down. And I like to do take one of the uh, pickle pebble, pebbles, put one on each one. What that is, it's a glass weight. Now I did pre-wash these. Again, all the are weights that are made out of glass. Plop that right in there. Put the other one in. There are two different types of airlocks that I have. We have this one here this type here. Both of them do well. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put one on one, one on the other, uh, just to show that it doesn't matter what type you use, it's fine. So now all you do, oops, here, make sure that's clean, which it is. Alrighty. Put that on. Put your other lock on. 
what you have to do with this one. You gotta actually go over, fill that up with water, and that kind of acts as an airlock for this one. This one has a seal in it, um, so it kind of acts like a, a sealing agent. But I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up and stick it in there. Okay, so I filled that up with water um, up to the line. Go ahead and stick that right on in. We're supposed to. Oops. Then there's a little cap. Goes on top of the airlock, just like that. And that's all you do. And what you do, you put it in the corner. Um, somewhere try to be out of the way and then just keep checking it every few days uh, make sure it doesn't bubble over and with that said there's one other thing that I like to do um, this isn't necessary but I like to do it anyway is I'll take a bowl put it right on in there that way because uh, once the once the starts fermenting, this juice is going to rise, and you'd be surprised how much goes over the edge. And that's it. Um, again, you let it sit. Let it sit for about uh, two to three weeks. Check it. If you don't, if it's not quite what you want, then keep it fermenting for more. And then once you get it to the point where you like it, just stick it in the fridge, and that'll stop the fermentation process. So. Let's check back in about two to three weeks and see what we have. Just wanted to give you a quick update. This is only two days later. You can see uh, from right here how the water has actually increased from here to here. And if you look close, you can see all kinds of bubbles in there. Um, that's a good sign. That means that um, the reactions are taking place. The good bacteria uh, that we want in there is activating, and you can see the color change slightly. That it's getting a, a little paler. That means again that everything's working the way it's supposed to. The fermentation process is taking place. Whoop! There was a big bubble right there. So everything's looking great. Everything's going well for just day two. And as you can see, the other one's bubbling over the top a little bit. So that's, of course, active fermentation. That's exactly what you want to see. Um, and of course, there's another reason why I put these in a bowl. So if that were to bubble out over, to just come right on down and no harm done. But so if you do see that bubbling, if you have one of these types of, ta of caps, um, it's fine, so don't worry about that. Okay, this is exactly week number one. After we did this, you'll see that it is still bubbling away, which is fantastic. That's exactly what you want to see. The actual color of it itself um, has blanched out. See it on this side as well. So both of these are doing fantastic. So that's one week in. We are off to a fantastic start. Okay, it's been about two weeks. So let's open up the containers and see what we have. Okay, it is now week number two. And as you can see, it's now turned from that blanch color into a darker color. That looks a lot more like the traditional sauerkraut that we're used to, or fermented cabbage that we're used to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open one of these up. Probably this one because it's easier to take off. Um, so what I'm going to do in that case is I'm going to go ahead and pop this off. That releases the pressure. And I'm going to go ahead, okay, 
go ahead and take this off. Okay, I'm going to do two hands for this. Ugh. So I'm going to go ahead and go off camera and open that up. Yep, definitely needed two hands for that. Um, just so you know, what I did is one hand I turned here, the other hand I pulled up here, and it released the pressure, and it was able to come right off. So now, there should be a weight right in there. Remember that, uh, that pebble, that glass pebble that we put in there, that glass weight? There it is. Go ahead and take that off, put it to the side, and we had that leaf that we put down there. Take that out and put it to the side. And now, go ahead and dig down in there, get a good taste. get some there. There it is. Nice big taste. Mmm. That is some good sauerkraut. A fermented cabbage. It has that that tanginess to it. Um, definitely that, that sauerkraut -y type taste to it. Sauerkrauty, is that a word? Mm. But it's very, very good. Though for me, I like it a little more uh, tangy, so I'm probably going to put it back and probably ferment it for another, probably about another week. Then what I do is I put it in the refrigerator. Now I do have some special caps. They're just these little plastic caps, um, like this. And you go ahead and put it on like that. Then you just put it back in the fridge and that'll stop the fermentation process and you're ready to go. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and easy fermentation with cabbage. Oh, and before I forget, um, if you could please at least take a look at our um, Patreon page, I'd really appreciate it at www.patreon.com slash rustlermania. Again, that would be very much appreciated. And also, please subscribe and share. We do like to see those numbers go up. So, um, again, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.